So everyone, um, we're here at the Lean Frontiers studio. We're here with Robin Seifert, who actually has some very interesting uh, stories she's gonna share about the work she's doing and eventually how it relates into training within industries and job instruction. So Robin, if you wanna just give us a little background on yourself and kind of how you got going on this, that'd be great. Okay, I actually have a public health background and I had done some HIV awareness in South Africa and Zambia. And I went with Mennonite Central Committee to do similar work in Bangladesh. And so we were doing HIV awareness and, and peer educator training with Mennonite Central Committee. And one of the communities asked us to start working with women who were in prostitution and they didn't have an option to come out of it. And as we started interviewing the women and hearing their stories, it was, it was so heartbreaking. Um, some had been sold or trafficked or lured into it or financially didn't feel like they have any options to feed their children um, or their mother was in prostitution and that stigma required them to also be in prostitution. So they were desperate for an opportunity to come out and do something that they were proud of. And so we started a training program, a job training program. And, th and this is above and beyond what you had originally gone over there for, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> in addition. Um, and never didn't didn't realize where it would take me. This was in 2008. 2008, okay. Yeah, so I originally went to Bangladesh in 2006. In 2008, we started this training program. And the first group in 2008, we started with 26 women thinking, oh, half of them will make it to the end. And all 26 finished. And it just That's really incredible. showed us that they really wanted an option for a dignified life. And so then three years later, when it was time to leave Bangladesh, I thought, how can I walk away from so many women who are desperate for an opportunity to come out of a life that they're ashamed of and they were forced into and sold into? And when, you know, a training and a job can change everything for them. So I went back in 2011 and started a business called Basha Boutique. And we started with 13 women in one room sewing um, Kanta blankets, which is... Which that's one of them? <laughs> yeah, one of them. And now we employ 100, over 160, 160 women, and we have around 160 children in our daycare as well. Wow. And we also have a nonprofit providing other support programs for them. I see. And, they, and, they, and you're manufacturing these with the ladies? Well, this is one of the things now. Now we have a wide range, but this is okay. what we started, started with. with. Okay. And, and what is, all do they use this for? Um, this is a very, this is what they would use when they have worn a sari. They would layer the saris and turn it into the a quilt. sari is? Sari is the, a cloth that they wrap. Okay. It's around seven, eight yards of cloth that okay. they wrap around to wear. To wear, okay. Either simply or more for dress up. It's, it's a common garment there. And so we take the ones that they have worn and we layer them and make blankets. They make... Um, welcome little blankets for babies. They use them to wipe things up. They use them to keep warm in the winter. They, they're very practical yeah. there for them. And as the layers come off, they just kind of keep adding them and adding them. And, and so for them, this is a very humble thing that they all have. And yet we found that people all over the world love them. So, so you're selling them internationally. <laughs> yeah, we okay. sell them Yeah, from Australia to Canada oh. to US to Singapore, Korea. Oh, many, many places. And we also like the symbolism of it, that you're taking something that was discarded and you're turning it into something beautiful. And that's what we see happening in the lives of the women that we work with, that they were and cast useful. aside and, and thrown away and now they're employed and they're prospering and rebuilding their lives into something beautiful. That's, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a website for this? We do, um, bashaboutique.com. And our nonprofit is friendsofbasha.org. Okay, so how do you how do you spell that? The Basha. Basha, B-A-S-H-A. Okay. Boutique. Boutique, B-O-U-T-I-Q-U-E. Dot com. Okay. And Basha is a Bangladeshi word. It means house, and Asha means hope. So the concept okay. is putting those two words together as the house of hope that we are building in Bangladesh. Wonderful.